All right, and let's get to sock puppets and spies, which is right here. Why isn't this pro? Can we read this with a sock puppet? Can you get a sock puppet right now? And like a little, just like a little sock puppet. In the CTI files written about today by Shell Edberger. No, it's not working for you. Is Sherry Lewis still alive? Can we get no her one. and Lamb Chop to do this? <laughs> lamb Chop? Uh, you right. know, I mean, Hinton's not alive either, so... No, God bless no him. No Kermit. Kermit, but keep right here. And in the CTI files written about today by Hillenberger and... We just lost Frank Oz, too. But... Um, Frank Oz, damn, I know. I know. Go in the my... CTI files... How would you like to hear this read in, in, read in Miss Piggy's voice? In the CTI <laughs> files, written about today by Shellbrook. Jeremy, yeah. in the CTI files, written about today. Yeah, anyway. Yep. Um, Would be great. Officials offer instruction uh, on COINTELPRO-style spy tactics against a target they knew was verboten, the American public. Mm hmm Yeah. Yep. While well, hashtag Twitter what files. What recipes do we need? Yep. While Twitter files confirm the use of defensive tactics like censorship and deamplification, CTI files show anti disinformation operatives planning to go on offense to disrupt speech, use fake personas, and spy tactics. We've been experiencing this the past yep. three years. I don't care what anybody tells you. That's a gaslight if they say it hasn't been happening. More than that. Why is right. why is there no actual recipes in the recipes category? Like what 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 uh, chocolate chip cookie isn't misinformation? Like you know what I mean? Mm. Something. Your spy disguise. Oh, Lock okay. your shit down. Impact containment. If you use compartmentation and per any persona, and everything goes wrong, all that gets compromised is the persona. Make a cutout. Yep. Burner phones. DTI League members were handed a big book of disinformation response that included the instruction in the use of burner phones and emails. How to do it. Yep. All right. When possible, I create a full identity with name, email address, VoIP, phone, and text as well. Like literally, create a separate identity. And then here are the Wait, most secure pseudo. mail services. Right, a pseudo. Okay, using tons of ways to get a free VoIP account. Some won't, won't you know, you'll want to re uh, use, require a real phone number and won't accept VoIP for account registration. So they give you that. Can we get all troll on their bums? In a CTI incident report about anti-lockdown memes, researchers asked if they had enough to ask for accounts to be taken down, and if not, can we get all troll on their bums? Mm. Look at the meme. Look at the meme. What wow. a dumb meme. Wow. Yellow Vest Canada protest against the COVID-19 lockdown. Okay, so this yeah. was specifically directed at Yeti and at Himbo, for sure. Yep, they right? definitely made that meme, probably, for sure. Oh, no, no. They um, definitely were the, the subject <laughs> of that meme, <laughs> I would say. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Also, a whistleblower told Public and Racket that the CTIL founder claimed to have introduced to induce the FBI to remove some content via a DNS takedown, and a CTI incident report appears to refer to this capability. That, okay, that's that's a little loose. I don't know that that's a DNS takedown. Data science is defect is detective work, and that they there's a lot of different takedowns. But okay, yep. basically, we're using many of the same tactics as the bad guys. Why do you think that is? Maybe because... Uh, because they wanna. You are the bad guys. Yep. 
Well, Basically, we're using play. many of the same techniques as the bad guys, but we're doing it in a good way. Uh, we, are creating, said it. we are helping to we are helping to people to understand the reality of complex situations. We are helping them to um, uh, avoid confusion, and we are helping to make simple, repeatable hopefully viral concepts that can saturate the information space in the same way the bad guys do. Viral with, uh -huh. with our narrative. With the bad guys. The bad guys are making misinforming, like, okay. intent, Directly misinforming intentionally what's going on here. So they know that it's expressly forbidden. In the training video, key CTIO member... Pablo Brewer says the most capable agency for anti-disinfo anti work would be the Defense Department, only it's expressly forbidden to operate against U.S. citizens. So let's hear him say so. The people that have the capability don't have the legal authority, right? Uh, and so the people that have the capability and expertise to do this is the U.S. Department of Defense. But the U.S. Department of Defense is expressly forbidden by presidential directive uh, and by law from uh, operating uh, against U.S. citizens, right? And so um, it's it's a kind of a third rail. Um, yes. Oh. It's illegal, so we just don't talk about it. Right. Okay. And, then, and then the people who do it overseas are typically the CIA and NSA, which is no surprise, but this sure. guy, Pablo Brewer. Also, it of, doesn't necessarily have to be us. We know how this works. We head right on over to Bellingcat. We head right on over to, you know, British folks. And, you know, I mean, there's countless NATO countries that are willing to, you know, go to bat for this. So... Mm -hmm. Right. Very easy to get around that. Well, the people in, and like, the people who do it overseas are typically the CIA and NSA, which I don't think that is a surprise. But in addition to DOD, intel collection agencies are legally not allowed to do these things in the U.S., which, again, we know, but here he is reiterating that point. The people that do it overseas are typically the CIA and the NSA and the Department of Defense, but again, I've already talked about that. Intel collection agencies are not uh, legally allowed to do those things inside the United States. Now, the FBI technically is with a warrant. Yeah. <clears throat> what do we do with John and Jane Q. Citizen that actually watches Fox News? See, this is this is where it comes out. Oh. Explaining that the agencies oh. currently doing this work domestically, DHS and the Global Engagement Center, are not very capable and we need to help them out. So basically, here they come in, swooping in like the superhero, the misinformation yeah. superhero, Captain Misinfo. Americans have a healthy distrust of their government, and it just wouldn't look good. So the people it's actually sitting with right now is the Department of State. Uh, and the Department of State now has a uh, new cell called the GEC, the Global Engagement Center. Uh, and they're supposed the to be doing it. Now, they're essentially brand new. Uh, they're just getting something like uh, $250 million next fiscal year. They're just ramping up. Frankly, they're not very capable right now. Um, but we need to help them out by deciding, you know, what kind of things can we do proactively? Yes, education is great for the kids that are in school now, but what, we, what do we do with uh, John and Jane Q. Citizen that actually, you know, uh, watch Fox News and believe Plandemic? You know, what do we do with those guys? Yeah, because no, no, we're talking about <clears throat> like brainwashing your kids. No, that's fine. That works. But what do we do about the people who aren't brainwashed? Well, no, they're brainwashed who might by be Fox watching News. Something not us. No, they're brainwashed by Fox sure, News. But I, it, yes, no, they are. Thank you. It's just that they're brainwashed to um, ask questions. Anyway, moving on. Specifically um, here because it's politically motivated. So here's another one. What do they mean by geck? The Global Engagement what Center. What do they mean by... The DHS and okay, the Global not, Engagement Center. Not the Garden of Eden creation kit. Got it. 
Just making sure. No, making no, sure it's my, not the Garden my of Fallout Eden. brain wasn't. Now, wasn't here's wasn't another one. In my head. Here's a guy in another CTIL video. Um, this guy logs NATO member Turkey for some really interesting false flags, including to pin ISIS bombings on the Kurds. And another big actor in the last uh, few years is Turkey, which no one um, speaks about a lot. But Turkey is a very strong. It has a very strong tradition of uh, of uh, information operations, intelligence information operations. Uh, so Turkey uh, directed most of its efforts. The last years, of course, against the Kurdish minority, and uh, they did some uh, really interesting post flag <clears throat> campaigns uh, to pin uh, uh, to pin ISIS bombings on the Kurds, uh, or to pin uh, bombings made by the Turkish intelligence uh, in Kurdish demonstrations on ISIS. Um, vice versa. What? Why? Why? Why are they admitting that in in a in a meeting like that? Okay. So mm -hmm. I love that we're actually getting the Zoom calls, and that somebody sat down and went through these things with the documentation, and like, wow, um, the good guys can use it too. Here we go. Now we get to hear SJ Turk. <laughs> All right. She talks about the new AI programs like ChatGPT generating credible text, credible sentences, and though the bad guys can use it, so can the good guys. And here we go. And then there's creation. So you've probably seen some of the new stuff about GPT-2, GPT-3 um, being used on text. Uh, and one of the, the cool things it can do is you, you feed it stuff, and it starts generating out, generating out credible text, credible sentences. Uh, and that for us is interesting because the bad guys can use that. Uh, actually, the good guys can use it too as part of the response, but that, that's another topic for another day. What day is that going to be? I mean, yesterday, pretty much. So the Amit framework, which was developed in part by CTL founders, Features 223 tactical counters, including fake sites, infiltration, and tabletop exercises to prep for misinformation, as happened with the Hunter Biden laptop story. Oh, we talked about that, didn't we? In the yes, Twitter files. Okay. When they mm -hmm. got together, Roth participated in an Aspen Institute tabletop exercise on a potential hack and dump operation relating to hunter the goal was to shape how the media covered it and how social media carried it well under the guise you know of the, you know the thing yeah under the guise of well how would you handle this and let's make sure we game this out so heaven forbid anything like this happens we don't get caught with our pants down we're doing this to help you and to help your cybersecurity department and to stop you from spreading misinformation and potentially negatively affecting a presidential election yeah, well, who's who's stopping you from uh, fucking misinformation and who's watching the watchers yes right correct. correct sir yes you are correct sir so honeypot flood disinformation spaces with obviously fake content to dilute core misinformation narratives in them that's honeypot with coordinated inauthentics. Then you've got infiltrate so the in-group to discredit leaders. What do, they, what do they mean by that? What, what do they mean by that? Like, I mean, classically honeypotting as far as spies is like, I don't know, Catherine Zeta-Jones, not like, so. Well, it's, it's flooding like, them with put, stories. Put, that are appealing right. to that the they people, know are fake so right. that you can but that you but for example like discredit them the story about the ai story with the burnt baby that that um that sure. 
Ben Shapiro puts out. Flood in disinformation spaces with obviously fake misinformation and have you spend time right, having but to it's debunk also, them. But then also... It's also like to do it, infiltrate these groups to then put the honeypot there that's obviously misinformation, see if anyone bites, and then if they do, like, easy to discredit. Mm -hmm. You know? So... Same okay. thing here, right? Infiltrate the in-group to discredit leaders. Um, I know of one specific group that had been screaming that they had been infiltrated and nobody really wanted to listen to or believe them. Yeah. Create fake website to issue a counter narrative and counter narrative through physical merchandise. That's also, mm -hmm. that also happened to a specific third party that was trying to start. Yep. And I'm not saying this happened to them or who was involved at, at all. It's just, it, it aligns very closely with very similar to this type of exercise. And then simulate misinformation, disinformation campaigns and responses to them before campaigns happen. And I don't know yeah. if those things were done, but I would guess that they were. All right. And then we had even somebody was looking for Open America Now and Make Liberty Great Again. Not sure it stuck, but yeah. might appear. Probably not our current target, but of interest nonetheless. So they were now starting to randomly grab things that might potentially be of interest rather than stuff that they definitively knew to be problematic. Now, all of a sudden, the shift is, is happening. It's going from absolutely finding misinformation out there to what potentially could be perceived by somebody as maybe misinformation. Maybe. But... Yeah. What does Make Liberty Great Again have anything to do with COVID? Nothing. Here's another report which lists a Declaration of Independence is my permission slip meme as a problem. That analyst feared even yep. such memes <laughs> is no surprise. One CTI doc noted satire was sometimes used as a gateway drug into more worrying groups. Uh-huh. Like, literally. Yep. They're saying satire's that, a satire's a gateway drug. Someone that's a shirt. To extremism. <laughs> yeah. We had satire detectors. Here she uh -huh. goes. Oh, listen to this one. Things like satire are really hard. Um, we actually had satire detectors at one thing I worked on because it just shows up as positive, even though it's it's completely negative. Like slash s just you know doesn't show. It's like nice work, bro, or you know the, the usual satirical gun. You know, uh, irony just doesn't doesn't work on machines. And so they had to develop something to identify and detect irony, which it did not obviously do very well, and identified a lot of people do well that right. were either shitting on something or actually positively saying something that they detected was irony. And that's why sometimes people got censored and they couldn't figure out why when they said nothing wrong. When they were yeah. praising somebody. Well, it's because one of these fucking information bots decided that what they said was actually satirical. Good job, bro. Exactly what she said. How many times yep. like, w was somebody being serious and got filtered out? 